how to survive underground when the world has ended. Your bunker door is sealed, and the air you're breathing is slowly killing you. You're three days in. The blast happened. The cities are ash. You're underground with steel walls, canned beans, and a ventilation fan you bought off a prepper form for $200. You feel safe. You're not. Your head's pounding. Your lungs burn. The air tastes like copper and regret. You didn't plan for physics, and physics doesn't negotiate. No worries. Let's talk about why your bunker is a tomb with a timer and what actually kills you when you think you're safe. First, the air. It doesn't care about your walls. You exhale carbon dioxide, about 200 milliliters per minute. In a sealed box, that CO2 doesn't vanish. It accumulates like interest on a debt you can't pay. At 1% concentration, you get drowsy. At 3%, your brain starts shutting down. At 5%, you pass out. At 8%, you're dead in an hour. Most amateur bunkers hit lethal levels in 72 hours with a family of four. You thought the walls would protect you, they're suffocating you. Step one, you need air exchange, not filtration, ventilation. Filters clean particles. They don't remove the CO2 you're drowning in. You need intake vents high, exhaust vents low, and powered fans running 24-7. CO2 is heavier than air. It sinks. It pools at floor level like invisible quicksand. You lie down to rest. You never wake up. Step two, install a CO2 monitor. If you're not measuring, you're guessing, and guessing gets you killed. When the readout hits 1,000 parts per million, you're in danger. That's when the dull headaches and dizziness start. At 5,000 ppm, you're unconscious. At 40,000 ppm, you're a statistic. Step three, calculate your air needs. An adult consumes about 550 liters of pure oxygen per day. A bunker with 1,000 cubic feet of space starts at 21% oxygen. With four people sealed inside and no ventilation, you hit hypoxia in under 48 hours. Your body compensates. Heart rate spikes, breathing accelerates, cognitive function collapses. Then you stop compensating. Then you stop. The science is simple. Oxygen deprivation is called hypoxia. Below 19.5% oxygen, your brain shuts down. At 15%, you lose consciousness. At 10%, you're dead in minutes. Your bunker isn't a fortress. It's a gas chamber you built yourself. If the CO2 monitor screams, congrats, you might survive. If it doesn't, congrats twice. You won't know you're dying. Next problem, humidity breeds death. Underground spaces are damp. Groundwater seeps through concrete. Every breath you exhale adds water vapor. In a sealed environment, humidity climbs fast. Above 60%, mold throws a party. Above 80%, you're living in a petri dish. Black mold, Stachybotrys charterum, produces mycotoxins that cause respiratory failure, immune suppression, and neurological damage. It colonizes your food, your clothes, your lungs. You thought you were storing supplies? You're cultivating a plague. Method 1. Control humidity religiously. Keep it below 50% using dehumidifiers and run them constantly. If you see condensation on the walls, you've already lost control. Mold spores are airborne. You're breathing them. They're breeding in your respiratory tract. Method two, store food in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. Seal everything. Climate control below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity below 15%. Rotate supplies quarterly. If you see mold, discard the entire batch. Don't taste it, don't smell it, don't breathe near it. Method three, monitor surfaces. Mold grows on organic material cardboard, cloth, leather, paper, your emergency documents rot, your clothing disintegrates, your first aid kit becomes toxic. Wipe surfaces with a bleach solution weekly. If it's damp, it's dangerous. Long-term exposure to even low levels of mold can cause persistent coughing, wheezing, and allergic reactions. Inhaled spores can colonize lung tissue. Your immune system fights back. It loses. You cough blood. You suffocate on your own inflammation. If the walls stay dry, congrats, you survive the mold. If they don't, congrats twice, you're the culture medium. Let's continue with the problem. Generators kill you faster than raiders. You've got a diesel generator, solar panels on the surface, battery banks in the basement. You thought power was a technical problem with a technical solution. It is, until the generator produces carbon monoxide. CO is odorless, invisible, lethal. 
At 400 ppm, you're unconscious in two hours. At 1600 ppm, you're dead in 15 minutes. Running a generator in an enclosed space without perfect ventilation is suicide with a runtime estimate. Start by venting exhaust outside. Use metal piping. Seal every joint. One leak and CO floods your bunker. You won't smell it. You'll just get tired. You'll lie down. You'll die. Then install CO detectors. Multiple units. Battery powered. Test them weekly. When the alarm sounds, you have minutes to evacuate. Not hours. Minutes. Finally, store fuel outside the living space. Diesel, gasoline, propane. All flammable, all toxic. A spill in a sealed bunker means fumes accumulate. One spark and you're not in a bunker anymore, you're in a bomb. The science? Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin 200 times more effectively than oxygen. Your blood carries CO instead of O2. Your cells suffocate. Your brain shuts down. You don't feel pain, you just stop. If the generator runs outside, congrats, you survived combustion. If it runs inside, congrats twice, you're a cautionary tale. The problem. Isolation breaks your brain. You thought silence was peaceful? It's not. The human brain needs sensory input to function. Deprive it long enough and it starts manufacturing its own reality. Sensory deprivation triggers hallucinations, paranoia, anxiety, dissociation. Time distortion sets in. You lose track of hours, then days. Sleep cycles collapse. Decision-making degrades. Soviet researchers tested this in the 1960s. Subjects isolated for 10 days showed symptoms mimicking schizophrenia. Soviet research, 1960s. Method 1. Establish routines. Wake at the same time. Eat at the same time. Exercise. Read. Talk. Without structure, your mind unravels. Method 2. Recognize signs of decline. Irritability. Insomnia. Paranoia. Intervene early. If someone's staring at walls for hours, they're not resting, they're dissociating. Method 3. Plan your exit. The bunker is temporary. No when to leave. If air degrades, supplies dwindle, or mental health collapses, evacuation is survival. The bunker's a shelter, not a prison. The science. Prolonged isolation causes measurable brain damage. The hippocampus shrinks. The prefrontal cortex atrophies. Emotional regulation collapses. You become your own worst enemy. If you maintain routines, congrats, you survived the silence. If you don't, congrats twice, you're talking to walls. The problem? Infection doesn't care about your stockpile. You've got antibiotics, painkillers, trauma kits. You thought first aid was about bandages and pills. It's not. Underground environments breed infection faster than surface wounds. Humidity accelerates bacterial growth. Poor ventilation traps pathogens. Stress suppresses immune function. A minor cut becomes cellulitis. Cellulitis becomes sepsis. Sepsis becomes death, all in 72 hours without IV antibiotics and sterile technique. Start by maintaining sterility, gloves, masks, disinfectant. Every wound is a potential infection. Clean it, bandage it, monitor it. If it swells, reddens, or oozes, you're in trouble. Then stockpile hospital-grade supplies, IV antibiotics, suture kits, sterile saline, diagnostic tools, take wilderness medicine or EMT training. When you're underground, you are the hospital. Finally, isolate the sick. Respiratory infections spread fast in close quarters. One person coughs, everyone's infected. Quarantine protocols aren't optional, they're survival. The science. Cellulitis. It's a bacterial skin infection. Without treatment, it spreads to the bloodstream. Sepsis. Your immune system overreacts. Inflammation cascades. Organs fail. You die from your own defense mechanisms. If wounds stay clean, congrats. You survived infection. If they don't, congrats twice. You're septic. The payoff. Your bunker isn't a fortress, it's a life support system. And like any system, it requires maintenance, redundancy, testing, and expertise. Without those, it's just a concrete coffin with a heavy door. The collapse won't kill you, your ignorance will. You've got three options. One, build a bunker that actually works. Engineer it, test it, train for it. Two, Accept that underground survival is harder than you think and prepare for surface strategies instead. Three, do nothing. Seal yourself in when the time comes.
Hope the air lasts longer than your optimism. They hoped. You'll prepare. They trusted the walls. You'll trust the science. They died in the dark. You won't. Your move.